When you're donning and doffing your personal protective equipment or PPE, how sure are you that you're actually doing it correctly and not contaminating yourself or others? Let's put your answer to the test. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Buffy, and did you know that one of the top CMS state and federal F880 tags currently happening at this time is for incorrectly using your PPE? Look, I get it. We are in an unprecedented situation where we're having to reuse our gowns, our face masks, and our face shields. We've never done this before. In fact, it goes against all of our infection control practices that we've ever done in the past. I don't want you to accidentally contaminate yourself, your coworkers, or your environment. So today we're going to have a little bit of fun and I'm going to demonstrate how to correctly don and doff your PPE and how to keep yourself safe. So let's get started. The first thing we always do remember is hand sanitize before we don our PPE. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my hand sanitizing. Make sure that I'm doing it for that good 20 seconds. Let's just say it's been 20 seconds, okay? Now we're all wearing our universal mask. So typically we would start with our gowns first and then put on our mask and shields, but we're gonna start with our mask and shield because this is our everyday life right now. This is our norm. So I have my face mask on and my face shield. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna put on my gown. Now be sure that you are tying up your gown completely. I've seen some facilities that receive state and federal citations because they're not actually tying up the gown. And I know, as you can see, sometimes it can be a little cumbersome, but take your time. It's worth it to protect yourself as well as your facility and to not receive a citation. You wanna put that gown on. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put on our gloves. Now, one thing that I like to say is within your facilities, make sure you have easy access to your PPE. For example, if you have a resident that's on a 14 day quarantine, make sure you have the bins directly outside of the room so that you have easy access to it. There's nothing worse than somebody needing PPE and they don't have it at their disposal. So make sure those bins are there and they're fully stopped. Okay, next we're gonna put on our gloves. And you wanna make sure that they cover the outside of the gown. Okay, don our gloves. All right, so now I'm ready to go into my resident room. Well, Let's just say I've now entered my resident room. I've done some treatment, I've done some care, and I've got some germs on my hand. So we're gonna use this little demonstration with the paint, and we're gonna say that this paint represents germs. It could be COVID-19, it could be C. difficile, it could be MRSA. You know, there's a lot of different microorganisms in our long-term care that we're not even talking about today. And so we wanna keep ourselves safe as well as our environment. So now, you know, this is what I see frequently. I'm gonna go into a little bit of rogue mode here. I see people adjusting their masks or their face shields. And now, well, I've potentially contaminated myself. Uh-oh, all right. So let's talk about what our proper doffing procedure is. I'm now leaving the resident room and I'm gonna take off my gloves. So you wanna pinch the top part of the glove to pull it off. Otherwise, if we're just pulling it off like that, we could potentially get it on our gown or on ourselves. So we're gonna pull it off and we're going to then go underneath the other glove with our two fingers and we're gonna pull it all the way through so we're not contaminating ourselves. Now, I just I described this, there's two different ways you can take your PPE off. Another way is to pull the gown off and then roll it all up. But because many facilities are reusing their gowns, we're not gonna describe that today. So I throw the gloves in the trash receptacle that's inside of the room, okay? And now, I like to do hand sanitizing because 
you know, anything that I'm touching, I just want to make sure that I hand sanitize. Now I'm going to take off my gown. So I want you to imagine that I'm having to reuse this gown. My facility is in a shortage. I'm using the CDC's optimization plan and I'm going to reuse this gown. So what I often see is people just pulling it off and then hanging it up on a hook the same way you would a coat. Well, we're gonna do it a little bit differently. So first, on the inside, we're gonna pull that arm through and then the other arm through like this. Now, when I'm gonna lean away from my body and I'm gonna pull the gown off. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but I've got a little bit of orange paint on here. I do not want this hung up facing outward and then me having to grab it and put it back on because I could potentially contaminate myself. So with it inside out, I'm now going to hang it up on a hook that I've already had implemented or um, installed into my room. And that way, when I go back to reuse it, all I need to do is simply put my arms back in it and pull it back on. And this contaminated or potentially contaminated part stays off of my body. So we're gonna hang it like that. Now, I'm gonna do hand sanitizing again because the next thing I need to do is I need to clean this face shield. I need to remove it. Now, many times what I'm seeing is people just go about their day and they're not cleaning or removing their face shield. The problem with this is, as you can see, I've been touching it and now there's germs on it. You wanna remove the face shield. Whatever process you have in place for cleaning and disinfecting, make sure you follow the CDC guidelines, which state that you need to actually clean and disinfect it with an appropriate cleaner, not just alcohol. You can use the alcohol to wipe away the film, but not just for your cleaning. So you wanna properly clean your shield and then throw away your face mask or if you're, you're continuing to use it for an N95 mask, then you can wear it throughout. That was a lot of information. And I hope that the paints had an impact for you as it really can show how we can potentially contaminate ourselves as well as others. In my next video, I'm going to talk about one of the most overlooked areas of in infection prevention and control. And you definitely do not wanna miss this. If you got something out of this video, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time. and even your per other, ugh. why am I struggling so much today? <laughs> it's been a minute. To keep yourself safe.